This video is about section 9.3, two means match pairs. Last section, we talk about comparing population means using two independent samples, which means the two samples have nothing to do with each other. This section will talk about comparing two population means with two samples that are closely related to each other's, which are matched pairs. Common cases are getting uh, samples from twins, couples, mother and daughter, same person before and after. Those are all cases with matched pairs. The null hypothesis about comparing two population means with matched pairs is usually mu d equals zero, which means the difference of the two population means is zero. The alternative hypothesis could be mu d is greater than zero, mu d is less than zero, or mu d is equal to zero, depending on your claim of the test. And the test statistic for this kind of test is t. And there are three requirements for this kind of test. First, the sample data are dependent. They must be matched pairs. Of course, right, we're doing matched pairs, uh, hypothesis test. So first, you need to have matched pairs. Second, So for each pair, the data are closely related to each other, but between different pairs, they're not related. For example, if you're getting example, uh, getting data from twins, one pair of twins have nothing to do with the other pair of twins. The third requirement is either n is greater than 30. n here means the number of pairs. So either the number of pairs is greater than 30 or the pairs of values have differences that are from a population with normal, distri normal distribution. Let's take this homework problem for example. It says, listed below are the numbers of words spoken in a day by each member of eight different random selected couples complete parts a and b below okay so here we have couples as pairs on top is male at the bottom is female a use a 0 0.01 significance level to test the claim that among couples males speak fewer words in a day than females so first of all we're having a matched pair and then the claim, if you translate that into a uh, symbolic form, it will be mu d, which is the difference uh, between, the word difference between male and female, right? Okay, if you look into the problem here, it says mu d is defined as the male words minus the female words. And the claim says the males speak fewer words than females. So if males speak fewer words than females, that means mu d must be, must be less than zero because mu d is the word spoken by male minus the word spoken by female, right? And the claim is um, the word said by male is less than the word of female and if you move the female to the left to the left side it will be male minus female less than zero which is mu d less than zero right so that will be the claim claim is mu d less than zero okay so here I'll put mu d is equal to zero will be the 
null hypothesis, null hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis is mu v is less than zero. Okay, now next question. Identify the test statistic. So here we'll go to StatCrunch. What you can do is click here, open the data in StatCrunch. And it will take you to StatCrunch and with the two columns here, one male, one female, and you go to stat. Since we're comparing uh, means, t-stat paired, because it's matched pairs. Paired, uh, sample one in male, sample two in female, and for the hypothesis test, not hypothesis, mu d is equal to zero. The alternative hypothesis, mu d is less than zero. And then you can click compute. All right, so here is your t stat test statistic. T test at t is your test statistic, negative five point, uh, no, negative 0 0.59. Three. Okay, round two decimal places as needed will be negative five, zero point five nine. Okay, now p value could also be found on StatCrunch. Here it says p value zero point two eight five nine. So go back to the problem zero point two eight. Five nine. If you round to three decimal places, that will be uh, zero point two eight six. All right. So with our p value, we compare it with our significance level, which is zero point zero one. Now this p-value is way bigger than the uh, significance level. So since p-value is greater than the significance level, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. That means our example is not extreme enough. Right? We fail to reject the null hypothesis because your p-value doesn't meet the standard. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. Next part is to construct the confidence interval. We want to find out the confidence interval of differencing words is between how many words to how many words. To find the confidence interval, we can go back to StatCrunch. You don't even have to redo everything. Just edit, go to edit, and confidence level. Okay, knowing our alpha is 0 0.01, right, knowing our claim is mu d is less than zero, from here we can tell what's given to us. This is a one-tailed test. So which means is a test with this area 0 0.01. As we talked about before, the confidence interval is kind of a two-tailed thing because you have a number in the middle, right? And you estimate it by using whatever your point estimate is, minus a number, you know, whatever that is. I will use just a triangle. And that same value plus a number, so it's kind of like a two tail thing, right? We only restricted the left tail as 0.01. So we should have this right tail area also 0.01. That will make the middle confidence interval area uh, 0.98. That will be your confidence level. 
So your confidence level is not 0 0.99, but 0 0.98. So over here, confidence interval will be 0 0.98. Compute. So here you have your lower limit and your upper limit. Okay, I put the value into those two blanks, round them to the nearest integer. Okay, so based on our confidence interval, what conclusion can we make? All right, since this confidence interval includes zero, because on one side is a negative number, on the other side is a positive number, so zero is in this interval, that means it is possible that the difference is a zero. If it is equal to zero, that means the uh, difference is zero, right? That, that means there's no difference. So here we'll say, since the confidence interval contains zero, we fail to reject the non-hypothesis because the non-hypothesis is mu d equal to zero. Well, since the confidence interval contains the zero, that means mu d is possible to be zero. We can't reject it because our interval is including it. And that's how we do this problem using set crunch.